Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a fun video. I don't know actually, this might not be very fun, but it was requested when you guys found out I bought the Natasha Denona Biba palette. Some of you had asked me to do a look with it and kind of talk about it, let you know my thoughts, whether I thought it was worth it. This isn't really a review, more so I just created this look in this video because we're about to head out and I needed to do something just like casual, neutral, Sunday afternoon errands type look. So while I'm using it, I might as well film it for you guys. So if you're curious to see how I created this look, just keep watching. Also guys, just to let you know, the lighting might be weird. Um, it was really gloomy in here and so I had the window open and I think it kind of messed with my lighting and I totally forgot to turn on my one softbox. So if the lighting is a little bit weird, I do apologize. Hopefully you guys can still get the gist of the whole thing um, and this video should be pretty quick. So that is all for the announcements and let's get into it. Okay guys, thought it would be fun to film a little get ready with me for you guys. I got all my skincare on, so if my face looks extra shiny, that's what it is. I got all of the things <laughs> on and yeah, just thought it would be fun to show you guys kind of what I would wear on an everyday. I did get some requests saying film a look with the Natasha Denona Biba palette and so I thought today would be the perfect time for a neutral look and I did kind of prime my lids with the Tatcha Pearl eye cream slash primer so yeah I'm just gonna hop in here I'm just wearing like a mauve shirt today so I just want to keep it really neutral and we're probably gonna go like to Target and stuff so I'm gonna go into the shade tone which is like a mid-tone brown and I'm just gonna throw that in the crease okay so this shade blends pretty nicely just a very muted brown nothing fancy about it this looks probably gonna take me like two seconds but that's okay <laughs> these brushes are so soft Okay, nice and blended. So I want to intensify the outer corner. So I'm going to go into this shade called Pasha. Pasha. And I'm just going to place that in the outer corner. Okay, so it's a little bit deeper. And now I want to go into Seeds. And just make it even a little bit more deep on the very outer edge. Just to give it some dimension. You guys know I love the word dimension around here. Give myself a really nice crease. So that's pretty much it. And then let's hit it with a little bit of a highlighter, a brow bone highlighter. So I'm grabbing the Sonia G brush in the Builder Pro and I'm gonna go into the shade Tusk, which um, Natasha Denona did do a video with Sephora, or no, maybe it was on her channel. I follow her on YouTube. She did like a breakdown of this palette and like went through each shade and she said Tusk was kind of her version of a universal brow bone. I don't really know how well this will work on somebody like lighter than me. It's a pretty, you know, pretty yellow or very like nude but also kind of still a darker nude. I don't know. That's how it feels like on my skin tone. So just thought I'd give you guys a heads up on that. And yeah, like I said, I want to keep this very simple, very like every day. Um, I honestly wear all kinds of looks on my day to day because I can wear crazy eyeshadow to work and stuff because I don't really deal with like customers or anything like that. And even when I do, it's like not a big deal. Like honestly, people don't ever say anything um, to me and so I don't really care. But anyway, this is the shade. Shine. I think I'm going to use that on the lid. I'm just grabbing my handy dandy flat brush from some cheapy brush that I got years ago. Um, and I'm just putting this on. So I feel like this would definitely be more impactful if I foiled it. Maybe I'll do that. But right now I just kind of want to keep it very mild. So I'm just kind of like packing it on and then like it almost like blends itself into the darker shades 
So these are the kind of looks I would do with like a neutral palette like this, honestly. It's just like very, very simple, nothing too crazy. And then just of course make sure everything's blended in the crease. I could probably try to intensify it if I use my finger. Just my nails are so long these days. And it's so hard to um, maneuver my nails. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to do um, for my eyes. I maybe kind of would like to do a wing, but it's definitely not necessary. And then for foundation, I'm going to try the Juvia's Place foundation again. I had two shades of this, so I want to use uh, Punta Cana, which is, I believe, going to be like a neutral shade. The shade Rio, the one I tried in a different video, um, it was a little too, was a little too warm. It was very yellow. So I thought maybe I'll try Punta Cana. Um, I bought two shades because I wasn't sure which shade I might be. This one's pretty yellow too. You guys had commented saying my lighting was a little weird in that other video. I haven't really changed anything. So, I might have to have my husband take a look and see if he can help me figure it out. So if anything is weird in this one, I'm sorry. Wow, I really did a bad job of color matching myself. But I love how this foundation blends. And it's like nice and full coverage and very, very matte. So I know like when I find my right shade or like when I get tanner as the summer progresses that I'm going to really enjoy having this around. Um, and I like the concealer too. This is only my second time wearing it. But I like it so far. Concealer time. This doe foot is huge. I was watching um, Tati's video with Scott Barnes today. I hadn't originally watched the first one. I didn't really know much about who he was, like that he was JLo's makeup artist and stuff. Um, so I never watched their first video. I was kind of like looking for something to watch, you know? And then I like stumbled upon it and I was like, okay, cool, like let me watch it. And it was actually really informative. Um, it's always nice when you can like hear from like industry people and people that have worked like on red carpets and stuff like that and um, just the different techniques he uses you know he definitely um, you could tell he definitely didn't think like Instagram makeup was the same thing as like what he did um, which is fine because like obviously he's like on a whole nother level but it was fun to watch and I thought it was very interesting and I'm just sticking to my hourglass powder he was so funny because I know I saw somebody comment on this and I didn't know what they what they were talking about but I guess Tati showed him the Jeffree Star powder um, that she was using to set her face and bake with and stuff and he was like, oh, um, well, I like the Makeup Forever and I know a lot of YouTubers say the Makeup Forever one has a lot of flashbacks so even I like never really tried it because I didn't really want like to ever be in a situation where I was, you know, under flash photography and then I was like white as a ghost so it was kind of funny that he was like, no. That's not a that's not a thing. And then I saw him show Tati how to contour, and that was pretty cool. Like I didn't know the stuff he said about like your cheek. So and he was like, like he went like right under the jaw, and like did you guys see how he like, they like cut her jaw? It was so cool. He like said like put it right under, and then. He like drew a line almost. It was really freaking cool. I'm clearly not good at this. But 
Also, you he want you have to do it like under your foundation. Um, but I thought, like she already has such a beautiful jawline, but like when I saw him, and then he like he did like the contour like that, like it was like a hug. <laughs> So it was interesting, right? Like, it's like stuff you don't really think about. And then he was like, you see that versus that? And I was like, whoa. Um, but my English looks crazy. Hmm. Do you guys see a difference? I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> but yeah, I'm still trying to decide if I like the Tantor product. To show you guys, I've been loving the MAC Aladdin bronzer. So nice. Just gonna pop some of that on too. I think it like is helping pull down this foundation for me because it's very yellow. I really like this brush but it sheds like a mofo. This is what I use on days where I can't be bothered filling on my brows. It's the Anastasia like dip brow gel. But, like, if you're somebody that needs to draw on, like, your entire brow, would not recommend. We'll be there all day. I did grab one of these LA Girl um, eyeliners. This is in the shade uh, Champagne. I just wanted to buy this to use as, like, an inner corner highlight. It's kind of, like, a great cheat because it, like, warms up your inner corner but you don't have to use a brush. And then I want to use brown in the waterline, so I'm going to use Pat McGrath. I thought that would be a little more subtle than using the black eyeliner. So I'm going to go back into buff. How do you guys like not poke your eyes when you do your lower lash line? Because I constantly do. So here's a blush I've been loving. This is the Milk Makeup Stick in work. This is like a baby size. And what I do is I just take this very um, rough brush I have for blush. This works so well with all my cream products. It's from like a Sonia um, Kashuk set I got from um, Target like forever ago. I don't even know where the other brushes are for this set, but this one, oh my god. I think I'll cry the day I like this brush falls apart on me because I love it so, so much. And there's so many little hairs on my face, but doesn't this blush give you like the best glow ever? You can also use these on your lips. It's like a very light wash of color. Um, but yeah, I really like that. And then I just want to use highlighter. My go-to these days has been the Aladdin highlighter. Um, this is in the shade Always One Jump Ahead. It's pretty toned down for me. Uh, definitely still full coverage, lots of highlighter. I want to use the Huda Beauty Resting Boss Face Spray, so let's do that. Okay, and then mascara and lippy. What do I want to do? Oh, lippy. I think I'm just going to go in. So I've been carrying this around um, because it's like my little bag of favorites. And so let's do, I haven't tried this combo yet, but True Stories, like my favorite matte. How Morphe. I love this color so, so much. And then I'm going to throw on this new gloss I got from ColourPop. It's called Fresco. Mmm. Juicy. So yeah, this is how I would do a neutral look. I will be right back to show you everything once I dry my hair and stuff. So hang in there. Okay guys, here is the final look. I hope you enjoyed it. When I was putting it together, I was like, oh gosh, is this gonna look weird? But I actually think we pulled it together. Like, I think I pulled it together. I saw it in the mirror in the bathroom and I really liked it. I think it looked very natural. The mattes blend so beautifully in this palette. Now, is this one you need to like run on and buy? No, you don't. But if all you like to do is neutral eyeshadow looks, I mean, you might want to splurge and get it. Is it my favorite neutral palette of all time? Not quite yet. 
I haven't quite worked with it that much, but I have definitely been enjoying Natasha Denona palettes lately. I did pick up the Star palette during the Sephora VIB sale. I haven't used that on my eyes yet, and I am thinking I might get the Sunrise palette. It does look beautiful. I like that it is a combination of her Sunset and Lila palette. Neither of those palettes I really liked. So I feel like this is like the perfect combo of the two. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this look. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Let me know your favorite neutral palette. In case I haven't checked that one out yet, I'd love to hear all of your thoughts. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one soon. Bye!